the role of innovation in improving global supply chain resilience. I'm joined today by Erez Agmoni. He is global head of innovation with MERS. Hi Erez, thank yes. you for being with me. Thank you very much, well, happy to be here. What is new in end-to-end -end supply chain, and for that matter, is it even a thing? That's a, definitely a good question if there is a thing like this. Mm -hmm. And I can say that until now, it's very difficult to put the finger of what is really an end-to-end -end because we see a lot of different parts coming together, trying to become an end-to-end. -end. And when I talk end-to-end, -end, I'm saying all the way on international level. It's not right. just uh, right. domestic. So in international level, you see very fragmented supply chain that multiple suppliers and even if it's the same supplier like MERS getting it it's been done on a different and fragmented level which is very difficult to really get a benefit of an end-to-end -end. so mm -hmm. i would say it's not there in the full extent yet but definitely there are certain things that uh, multiple companies working on i know that we're doing as well that actually could change the game for customers to change the supply chain. Okay, so what is going on out there to change or improve this so-called end-to-end supply chain? Right, so we have multiple different things that needs to be working together. We looked in the past about how supply chain is behaving, so deep dive the data, a million shipment from our database, just to understand what is it that customers seeing, what, what do they expect? And what we discovered is that when you talk about segmentation, each segment, there is a very good repetitive transit time, relatively repetitive transit time. Mm -hmm. You can relatively control the price, you relatively can control the service level. But now when you start to add one segment on top of another, you see a huge variation in that. Uh, disruptions coming in, a different handover is kicking and not functioning as well. Uh, starting to bringing those elements together from data perspective, from handover perspective, from flow of the goods and information perspective, from the ability to change routing is a super important to actually create something that can be repetitively uh, uh -huh. done. In order to do that, it's not only that you can handle it by moving the goods or, or controlling as, as a control tower the goods, you need your warehouses and your trucks and everything to work in synchrony and everything to work in a way that you can duplicate it in many locations without the teaching and relearning curve that takes mm. time. Sounds like a dream. It's <laughs> a dream that hopefully is coming up soon. So Yeah, you I'll, think so? Well, but first of all, I mean, what has to happen, not only the transfer of the physical goods between those various fragments, but the flow of data Absolutely. that accompanies it. Now, how good a job are supply chain industry providers doing in making sure that that data flows all the way through in a coherent, standardized form so, following the actual physical goods? Yeah, so I can say that it's, a, it's been a challenge for quite a long time to make it a real good flow of data because First of all, if you're not controlling all the assets along the end-to-end, -end, suddenly you need to work with third-party companies that have different data and different ways to transmit it. Sometimes they send it in the right way, sometimes it's not. Milestoning information for years is not doing well. That's why you see so many startups trying to recover and help customers to do that, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to a, a software level of right. information. Uh, hardware is doing slightly better, but of course the cost is so much higher. So uh, it's not well yet. It's coming there. Few companies are actually starting to bring it all together. But I think it will take a little bit more time until we see a seamless uh, flow of information and data across the whole system. Well, Arez, we've been talking here about the flow of products and data through a normal everyday supply chain. And of course, we know that supply chains are not normal and every day. There are constant disruptions that are threatening the flow Absolutely. of those products and data. So what kind of innovations are you seeing out there that can help to really shore up and improve supply chain resilience in the face of these disruptions? Absolutely. And, and 
I think the really common thing in supply chain, the regular thing is, is disruption. Mm -hmm. So the change is very much happening all the time. It's one time the Houthis and another one the Panama Canal and before that, uh, you know, COVID and the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. um, from our perspective is to look into really how you can control and change this, the flow of the goods. So it's until today and still today, mm -hmm. customers, the BCOs, the people that are actually controlling the cargo are prescribing how to move the cargo. You move it from A to B to C to D. Mm -hmm. You handle this, you handle that. Instead of taking the suppliers, the, the, the service providers accountable for the end to end and making them, I want you to bring it to here by this time, you do your thing. Uh -huh. The moment that you break it for them and you say, oh, you do this and you do this, everybody's, I did my job, what do you want? So what if the whole thing broke up? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we see in terms of innovative ideas is understanding and predict which route will be the best for this shipment, not in general, not in the whole year, but for this specific shipment that you're about to ship before it leaves, before it goes on the boat, on the, on the aircraft or whatever it is. You need to start predict multiple routing, how they're going to behave and decide which one is the most reliable for that shipment. Of course, you need to do that. You need, again, all the robotics, all the data flows, all the digital elements that coming all together to support every movement of the of The, the word predict is a very loaded word because it means you have to have in hand not only the data once again, but you have to have historical performance in order to extrapolate that into the future. I didn't hear you use AI as a, as a reference, but are we not talking about artificial intelligence as a key enabler of that type of predictive capability? Absolutely. AI is definitely a core element. Huge amount of data sets, it's, it's a must, because otherwise, how are you going to do that? And a human in the loop, because black yeah. swans, the moment they happen, you can't predict them. Mm -hmm. You can, pre you can analyze what will happen after they already occur. So you need to keep the human in the loop. Of course, all the AI will give you that, but you need to intervene sometimes and say, don't go from here, I know there is a problem. Or here, expect to have a delay of X. That's kind of a, the sherry on the top to my, make sure that you're not just trying to do something based on your historical stuff that right now are being changed in front of your eyes. So it's definitely coming together, AI uh -huh. and people. What are some of the actual sources of disruption that do threaten resilience lately that we've seen that have brought us about to this state of affairs? What, what's been happening in, in that so, way? Nowadays, the most recent things, you have uh, Panama Canal that doesn't have enough water. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, it's, it's, we have a problem, less vessels can pass the canal. Mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, the Red Sea issues when People have to go basically across the, the Cape of Good Hope, where now it's just a disruption of two weeks each direction, which becoming a month overall and redesign of networks. But when winter over there comes, it's going to be slightly more tricky because rough seas and uh, difficult uh, to pass. These are two co easy stuff. There is strikes here and there constantly yeah. uh, what you see. We always see in Europe, in the US, in East Coast, West Coast, it, those type of things are kind of repeated. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Erez, for helping us to understand just where the dangers are, where the disruptions are, and how companies and service providers can truly provide end-to-end -end supply chains. But I do want to take a moment to ask you specifically about Nurse Innovation Center. What goes on there and how do you contribute to these efforts? Absolutely. So the Mercy Innovation Center is something that has been uh, structured and built three years ago. Uh, we did innovation before that, but it was unstructured. Uh, we have actual facilities, one in Jersey City, another one in Shanghai. But people are actually spread around the world with multiple uh, diverse uh, team uh, from different backgrounds, different genders, uh, different knowledge of things. Mm -hmm. Our main core elements we are working on are three pillars. One is the autonomous and uh, robotics. 
So automation and autonomous, this is one pillar. Quite a lot of this goes within the warehouse or on the road when we're trying to look for solution to improve the way uh, we work in those environments, uh, creating constant, uh, repeatable, higher, uh, better, uh, rep uh, oops, uh, better productivity for our work. Then we have the second pillar, digital innovation. That's where we're working on digital twin. Uh, we're working on multiple co computer vision elements that can support us when data is not available and not in system. You can actually bring it from a computer vision element mm -hmm. and all the other cool buzzwords, AI, machine learning, etc. that sits under the digital uh, innovation. And last but not least, I think one of the most important pillars that we have is a product innovation where we actually looking at the services that we're offering to our customers and trying to create something to have much better supply chain for those customers. So one of the things I was speaking before about is making sure that we can actually create dynamic routing for, for our customers. Right. So instead of letting them choose one, two, three, is holding us responsible A to Z, and we make that decision, make sure that the cargo repeatedly come on that time. So that's falling under that. Thanks again, Arez, I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bob, appreciate it. I have been speaking with Arez Agmoni of Maersk. Thank you very much for watching.